I can read out a few questions for you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and make sure to thank those uh, mates of yours for the renders. They absolutely. That was, uh, I think they might be even here. Oh, yeah. I'm not so sure. Can I check Even that? The support. <laughs> I think so. I asked if they wanted to talk, but um, I think they're they're a little bit shy because English is not their native language. So, which I understand. So that's totally fine. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, I'm Aussie. I barely speak English, but I'm doing it anyway. <laughs> with a with a really great accent. <laughs> um, can you give some tips or things to remember while doing a blocking on a creature? Mm hmm. Yeah, so I think uh, blocking stage is really important, and I think it's um, it's good to spend a lot of time on blocking because that'll make your life a lot easier uh, when you're da down the road when you're doing your spline and cleanup. Um, one thing I found very helpful was to always check your animation from above because you'll be able to see the motion through space. Um, and if it's moving correctly, if it's going in the right trajectory, if it's going the right speed, and you can see all that really well from the top view. So I would always check top view a lot, and then I'd make sure that all my poses are pretty solid, that their center of gravity is like where it's supposed to be, it's not tipping anywhere. So like make sure your, uh, your uh, poses are on model, and match them to some reference, uh, and then um, that that'll give you a really good base uh, before you go into splining and uh, detailing. If you have anything to add, Eddie, you can definitely add it. Yeah, and don't feel like blocking has to be done in a certain amount of time. And I mm. tell everyone this, um, blocking can go for, for weeks and weeks and even months. Mm -hmm. like, you know, you can even go up to eight weeks and still be changing the timing and the you know, the framing, the beats, um, mm -hmm. that doesn't have to be like sorted out by, you know, the second week, uh, you can yeah. really stretch it out and keep working on it. And then it makes the final polishing stage a lot quicker and a lot less headaches and back and forth. So mm -hmm. you feel like you're falling behind or feeling pressure. If you start to just, you know, it eats into like a few weeks of blocking, just make sure you're, it's all, it's all planning, so make sure your planning is really just feeling good before you head into like detail stuff. And oh, I know everyone yeah, yeah. like gets impatient and wants to just like start adding the cool stuff, but <laughs> the cool stuff has to be blocked in and feeling good before moving on. Yeah, totally. And then um, one thing that we were going through in our class a lot was uh, changing small things on the idea. And that's always great to do in the blocking stage as well, right? So before you go into like any detailing, once you do the detailing, it's much harder to go back and change like the overall idea. Yeah, exactly. So which animal will you animate next? <laughs> um, that's a good question. If it's a if it's like a feline, I definitely want to do um, a snow leopard. Cause they're just so crazy. Like it's insane what they're able to do. Um, but also I really want to do like a mythical creature, like a dragon or something like that for my next project. That'd yeah, be. Someone mentioned dragons. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's, that'd be really great. Or even just like a cat, like bubble tea. I would like cat, <laughs> bubble tea is my cat, by the way. Not that I want to animate bubble tea. <laughs> Didn't we inject some of, uh, Bubble Tea's personality into this tiger? We did, we did. So um, uh, if you look at the shot, let me just really quick. It's it's really cute how she, um, so Bubble Tea, my tiger, uh, my, not my tiger, my cat. <laughs> she She's very um, like light footed. She'll always pat on things before she uh, steps down. So you can see this happening right uh, when right before the tigress is about to jump, she pats the the wood, and that's exactly what Bubble Tea does right before she like walks onto something, just because she's really scared of things, I guess. <laughs> yeah, so I, I guess like animating Bubble Tea that would be that'd be a dream too. <laughs> and um, you know, finding those little personalities and behaviors to add into your creature, or your character, just makes it feel more. Uh, real like with the you were saying with the foot placement yeah totally your character 
feel like it's a younger cat, right? Like less experience yeah. in the world. And, yeah. Uh, trying to find its footing. Mm hmm. No, totally. That's so true. And also, like, just like you said, um, I guess the age of the animal or creature matters a lot too on how it behaves. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and this this great foot shake that everyone loves so much. Everyone loves this foot shake, and that was uh, that was Eddie's idea. Uh, all cats do it, I guess, when they step into water, especially house cats. But this was a reference t taken from a bobcat who jumps. Uh, and uh, lands halfway in the water and like shakes the paw. It's really great. Yeah, I also uh, noticed that on my cats after they yeah. get out of the litter box, they're like, <laughs> <laughs> totally. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Let me see if uh, I can what show. about um, particular muscle systems like Ziva or something? Yeah. I've seen a few times. Is it worth that? Are the Maya scripts? Um, I guess like those, uh, like Ziva would be much more realistic and it would be much more like high def. So you'd have like, because I've seen, um, you work for Ziva, right? So <laughs> I mean, I'll just say what I've seen. Uh, so I've seen um, like how they have muscle and skin and then they have like the, all the different, so they basically model out all the muscles and then they have like overlapping muscles and stuff and it all like, it's all very realistic and of course the script you can make it like mimic the realistic aspect as well but um it won't match the same level so if you want to do it the next step and actually give it that kind of skin and muscle uh then definitely go for a ziva but i just don't know how it works and i guess i'd need to ask someone who's familiar with the program or the plugin to um, help me on the shot as well because I don't think I could do that myself. Yeah, and I think Ziva is a lot more expensive. Mm. Uh, um, the setup, I think, just for the tools itself, uh, it mm -hmm. requires a TD uh, creature artist and totally, yeah, yeah, but definitely like gets you the most realistic results. Absolutely, yeah. Ziva does some crazy stuff. If you uh, want to look into it it's they've got really great like uh, media or like really great video clips and then they have like great breakdowns on how it works and it's cool because they start from like the bones and then they build it up with the muscle and then the skin and like all the stuff which really brings the creature to life so definitely look into it if you're interested in like realistic creature animation yeah, and your Jiro script is uh, essentially a an affordable option for everyone. Absolutely. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, um, it's perfect for us where we can just grab it and throw it on and it gets you nice results. It's not going to get you Ziva results, but it's going to get yeah. you another level to... Totally, uh, yeah. The rig. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And it's, it's by donation, so he only asked for $1, um, but I... Obviously, I would suggest uh, giving a lot more than just one dollar because it's really a uh, really great script. So you can just see how, um, like the before and after. There's such a like world of difference. I feel like to how real she looks. The animation is exactly the same, but I feel like after I add the jiggle, it just makes her look more like a like a grounded creature. Yeah, definitely. Um, it just brings you into reality a bit more. Mm -hmm. Totally, yeah. Does uh, anyone else have any other questions for Alicia? I'm just searching through. <laughs> um, what was your biggest difference? This is from me, by the way. Yeah. What was the biggest difference for you in terms of starting this shot mm -hmm. and your life after the shot? Ooh, um, that's crazy. Yeah, in, like when I say that in the sense of um, being an artist, are you more confident and did more opportunities <laughs> come to you and things like that? Yeah, totally. So um, before making the shot, I didn't have a lot of, or I didn't have any experience making um, realistic creature animation, even though that's something I really wanted to do for a long time. And I kind of put off learning it just because I, I uh, like there was another project I was doing and then um, I just thought I wasn't ready yet because I thought if I 
if I start now, my creature shot won't be as good. Or if I if I learn a little bit and then I start my creatures out, then it'll be really great. So I think that's something a mindset that you can't fall into because it's never too late to start learning, and it's best to start learning as soon as possible. So uh, I feel like if I didn't do this shot, I wouldn't be as good as I am now. And if I waited to do the shot, I would have just postponed getting to the same level. So definitely start as soon as possible and whenever you can. And um, uh, like when I was making the shot, in my mind, I was like, I'm going to make this so epic. It's going to be so real and everything. And then halfway through, I started getting really sad because I was like, it's not at the same level as I thought it would be or like I imagined it to be so much better than it is. But then like you have to just keep pushing yourself and it will get there. So like I feel like I learned so much and I improved so much during the shot and it really turned out quite epic for in my opinion um, because of all the great tips uh, that Eddie gave me and that, that I learned on the journey and I definitely did get a lot more um, opportunities so one thing also is um, like after I uploaded my shot I thought it was just done and that I could move on to the next project which I can but it wasn't done because people were interested in making the shot even better. So like Alejandra and York, they um, messaged me and asked if they can do like look dev on it and fur and everything, which is so cool. Like I didn't think that that would happen. So now it's even, it's going like beyond me. It's going like out there and it's going to be so great. So that's one thing too. Like don't, your project isn't done when you're done with it. It's like, it'll the life will continue when it's out there on the web and stuff and also one thing i think is very important is to uh, keep your maya scenes clean i didn't keep it clean because i thought i didn't need to because i was like nobody's gonna look at this but then it turns out i have to give it to someone else and it was the terrible mess <laughs> and i don't know how they got through uh sorting through all the crazy stuff i had in my shot but yeah and uh, yeah right now i think the industry was like not too active in the past weeks because of the pandemic, but it's growing a lot again right now. So I think uh, now is a good time to apply for jobs and stuff. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm. That's what I'm hearing. Is that a, is that a good answer? Yeah, that's a great answer. Trust the process. Cool. Yeah, definitely. Okay. And just again, be patient and just believe in your. In, believe in the process really it is a process. absolutely you know it's not just like a an accident that you yeah that with a you know amazing shot it requires correct decisions as you go making mm -hmm. right choices and you'll get there eventually yeah 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 totally um and there's another question for you what is uh, yeah. next for your career moves um did you want to do more like creature quadruped stuff things like lion king or mm -hmm. what yeah what interest yeah moving forward oh that's so that's so cool um i do want to do like realistic creatures uh, and stuff like lion king i would love to work on lion king if ever a sequel comes out or anything like that um but i also i also have like so many other passions like i love cartoony animation like I love Frozen 2 and and uh, Pixar and stuff so I I also want to do that in a way and uh, game cinematics that's such a huge like that's one of my big goals is to get into game cinematics as well because they just do I really like short condensed projects um, it just gives you more uh, exploration and then you can it, you're not committed to something for too long so I think that'd be really cool to explore um, but also I'd love to continue doing like in independent short films I do love um, making my own ideas and stuff so that's also something I want to do which I would definitely love bringing realistic creature animation into like my short film ideas yeah and uh, making something cool with it yeah, nice one. And if no one else has any other questions, I'm just going to wrap this up. Anybody? <laughs> Maybe we'll just wrap it up then. 
All right, that sounds great. Thanks so much for uh, attending, everyone. Yeah, thanks for your time. You know, time is uh, it's a precious thing. So mm -hmm. it's uh, valuable. No, it was yeah. great. Yeah. So thanks for having me. I'll jump in a video here. Yeah. yeah. And that was an amazing talk. And you know, when you have the final renders up with the god rays and everything, yeah. Just yeah. Post it up and let us know. I want to totally. Check. Yeah. Thank you so much. And thanks for everyone for uh, joining and for listening. Yeah, thank you guys for attending. And yeah, again, thank you, Alicia. <laughs> no problem, no problem. I hope it was helpful for everyone. I hope it yeah. wasn't too boring and dry. Very informative, very detailed. Yeah, so, cool. All right, guys, thank you. Cool, thank you. Thank you. See you guys. <laughs>